In the Zaya era, an incident occurred in Saudi Arabia that shook the Islamic world. In November 1979, 500 armed men took over the Kaaba. Saudi military forces attempted to recover the Kaaba but failed, and in this effort, the Saudi army suffered heavy casualties. The Saudi government called for help from Pakistan and France. Scamandos from Pakistan were sent to protect the Kaaba. After two weeks of continuous struggle, the Kaaba was successfully released from them. Invaders Juhayman, the leader of the invaders, was captured alive along with 60 companions. Following this incident, defense cooperation between Saudi Arabia and Pakistan increased significantly. In the Islamic world, Zia ul Haq was hailed as a hero, and even today, the Pakistani army is seen as the guardian of holy places. However, Zia's reputation suffered when India occupied Siachen. Zia famously remarked, There is not even grass on Siachen. He couldn't reclaim Siachen but he later prevented a Pakistan-India war by threatening India with nuclear retaliation. India conducted war exercises in Rajasthan in 1987, known as Brastic, and Zaya received secret information that India was planning to attack Pakistan under the cover of these exercises. Zaya made an uninvited visit to India, using the pretext of watching a Pakistan-India test match, and met with Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. He warned Rajiv Gandhi that if India attacked Pakistan, Pakistan would respond with nuclear weapons. This warning proved effective, and Rajiv Gandhi withdrew the Indian army from Pakistan's borders. General Zaya had a disdain for the constitution, and often said it was just a 12-page booklet that could be torn to pieces at any time. He made frequent changes to the constitution to maintain his grip on power. He initiated the Islamization of the Constitution, establishing prayer committees, imposing zakat on bank accounts, and introducing quazes in courts to implement Sharia rules. He also set up the Islamic Ideology Council Sharia Court and Rodi Hilal Committee. During his tenure, death penalties were imposed for blasphemous crimes. Zaya introduced Article 62 and 61 requiring members of the assembly to be honest and truthful. These clauses later led to the disqualification of a prime minister and a foreign minister. Under the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, Zaya added 58, tube, which allowed the president to dissolve the assemblies. He held a referendum across the country in December 1984, asking if people wanted an Islamic system, with the condition that Zaya would remain president for the next five years if they agreed. Even children were allowed to vote, and as expected, Zia won the referendum with a massive majority of 97.7%. It is said that General Zia was using the name of Islam to consolidate power for himself. In short, Zia consolidated all powers under the constitution and held non-party elections in 1985, resulting in the promotion of nepotism and racism. After the election General Zia instead of entering the assembly himself, selected Muhammad Khan Junjo as the prime minister. Most members of the assembly had not even heard of Junjo and asked, who is he? General Zaya believed that Junjo would be submissive to him, but that didn't happen. Junjo, a seasoned politician, considered himself accountable to the public and started asserting his powers. In his final days Junjo even made decisions without consulting general. Zaya and signed the Geneva Convention without Zaya's input. For this Junjo faced the same fate as past Prime Ministers under G. Muhammad and Skander Mirza. When Zaya grew tired of Junjo's actions, he dissolved Junjo's government, using his powers, under 58 tube. General Zaya supported Nawaz Sharif, who was the chief minister of Punjab at the time. When Junjo's government was dismissed, Nawaz Sharif remained in office as calm. The country's economic conditions improved during Zaya's era, and Pakistan gained respect worldwide. One major reason for this was Pakistan's role as a frontline state against the U.S. -er. Several years of economic sanctions were lifted, and us, aid resumed. European countries aligned with Pakistan against Russia. Pakistanis went abroad for job opportunities, which improved their economic conditions. However, Zaya's opponents claim that all this economic development was artificial 
and a result of American aid. You've just witnessed the political history of Zaya's government. But the real story of Zaya involves his role in the Afghan war, a 43-minute commando operation that impacted about 1.2 million Afghans, and how Zia thwarted the Usser's dream of gaining access to warm waters. Stay tuned for the next episode to learn more.